Bonsuelo, everybody. Okay, this remember I said we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about composition first. That was section 6.1. Today, we're going to talk about inverse functions, which is section 6.2. Now, I ended the last video by talking about notation. I'm going to start this video talking about notation because you have to be very, very careful. Okay? Because... How do we indicate an inverse function? We write it like this. We use a negative exponent, or what looks like a negative exponent. But that doesn't mean what an, a negative exponent normally means, okay? When you're using that negative one, and it'll never be negative two, negative three, it's just negative one. It means inverse function, period. That's all it means. It does not mean change the position of the value, okay? So normally, a negative exponent would mean, say, move something from the numerator into the denominator or move something from the denominator into the numerator. That's not what a negative exponent means when you're using function notation. And I wanna emphasize this, it's function notation, okay? If I give you this, Okay, notice the negative exponent is not on the function notation symbol. The negative exponent's on the variable, so it means one over x, okay? But if the negative exponent's on the function notation, that means inverse function. It does not mean the same thing a negative exponent normally means, okay? It means find the inverse function. Whatever an inverse function is, that's what that means, okay? So I just want you to be aware of that. So again, normally x to the negative first would be one over x. F to the negative one of x means find the inverse function, okay? Which we're gonna discuss today. All right, it's not even partially discussed. Uh, well, I mean, I am going to discuss it, but I'm going to have another file that talks about it a little bit more. But for the most part, I'll tell you what it is today. Okay, an inverse function has the domain and range switch from the original function. What does that mean? Remember, domain is your x values, range are your y values. So basically, you're going to switch x and y. Really, I mean, that's it. Okay, the thing you got to be careful of, quite frankly, is the notation. This is what messes people up more than actually how to do it, okay? So, given 2 comma 3, 5 comma 9, and 13 comma 24, what's the inverse function? Well, you just switch the x and y, and it's 3 comma 2, 9 comma 5, and 24 comma 13. Why we do this, I'm not going to get into today. We'll do that when we start talking chapter 7. Like I said, this is really more of an introduction to chapter 7 than it is part of chapter six. I don't know why they put it in chapter six, but they did, okay? So again, notation, I can't emphasize that enough, okay? So, uh, so for example here, given f of x equals seven comma nine, 13 comma 10, 41 comma 23, find f to the negative one of x. That does not mean what, you know, like put it in the denominator. It means switch x and y. So you get 9 comma 7, 10 comma 13, and 23 comma 41. Okay, now for equations. So that's pretty straightforward. And actually, this is pretty straightforward too. It's not really all that difficult if you can just get past the notation. Given g of x equals 3x plus 2, find g to the negative 1 of x. Okay, so g of x equals 3x plus 2 means y equals 3x plus 2. So what we do is wherever there's a y, you put an x, and wherever there's an x, you put a y. Really, that's all it is. You just switch the x and y, and then you get y alone. Okay? And then at the end, I don't care if you write y equals one-third x minus two-thirds, but technically it's g to the negative one of x equals one-third x minus two-thirds. Okay? And really, I'm not kidding you, that's all there is to it. Okay, so here, given k of x equals 
x plus 7 over all over 11, find k to the negative 1 of x. You switch the x and y. Again, remembering that the k of x, that, that refers to the y. You get y alone, and then write the equation. k to the negative 1 of x equals 11x minus 7. So quite frankly, that's it. Um, you just have to be really, really careful about notation, and I think you'll see that eventually um, when we start doing some problems because there'll be another file a little later on where we start doing some problems. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye, everybody.